Is tension the key to muscle growth, or is it a toxin coming after your children? Tonight, news at 11. Thanks, Gail. Frank Mike Gizratelovich here. Oh, that was a terrible fake name. Is tension the key to muscle growth? Yes, but the rest of this video exists, so we ought to fill up the time somehow. Is tension the key to muscle growth? You might have heard people say this, and oftentimes they're defending very heavy lifting to grow muscle. You're fucking hard and heavy, brother. Amazing. Thank you, sir. Why is your voice like that? They're not wrong. It turns out the vast majority of the growth response you get from hypertrophy training, training for muscle growth, is from receptors in your muscle cells called mechanoreceptors. They literally detect mechanical tension and they become more active as protein kinases when that happens. And they signal through a few different pathways to the rest of the muscle cell to like grow more muscle. That's what they do. Much, most of your muscle growth is tension detection based. In that sense, tension absolutely is the core element of growing muscle. So if that's the case, should we all be trying to lift as much weight as possible? Is there a 1RM for growth RP program coming on the RP hypertrophy app? No, because there are at least four considerations to contextualize the understanding of what tension causing muscle growth in the majority means. And here's the first one. First, there is a minimum threshold. And then after that, it doesn't much matter. What does that mean? Anything over roughly your 30 rep max, anything heavier than that, is already tense enough, enough tension to create a robust growth response. You can go heavier for other reasons. Maybe it's a better stimulus to fatigue ratio for you. Maybe you just enjoy it more. Maybe you also want to get stronger while getting bigger. But going heavier than even something like a 30 rep max so like going from 20 to 30 rep max to 20 rep max to 10 rep max to five rep max lifting probably will result in roughly the same growth for you over a several month time span. So at least in the short to medium term, how heavy you go as long as it's heavy enough to be heavier than roughly 30% of your rep max probably doesn't matter much, if at all. So it's true to say that heavier is better because tension is king, but that's just like if someone's lifting their 100 rep max, you know, like the guy at the gym that puts the curl machine slot at the, the, like the 10, like the first available increment. He's like doing this. Hey, Jim. Yep. Tuesdays. Am I right? All right, buddy. See you later. And you're like, I think if it, if it gun to your head, you could do a thousand of those. Like Andrew Tate. Don't train like that. That's too light. It doesn't cause a lot of muscle growth. But if it's at least your 30RM, 30RM, I can speak, I promise, or heavier, you're kind of good to go. So it's just not true to say that much more tension beyond that is necessarily going to cause more growth. So there's that minimum threshold. Secondly, is the concept of area under the curve. Yes, it is true that if you lift five reps heavy, the per rep mechanoreceptor activity that tells your muscles to grow is going to be pretty fucking high. It's like grow, 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 rack, rest. So your muscle cells like, okay, fuck, that was a lot of yelling at me to grow. Let's hit it, fellas. Get the fucking proteins doing whatever the fuck they do. Let's grow. Sweet. And it is also true to say that if it's, oh, let's say your 20 rep max, much lighter, each repetition with your 20 rep max is a much smaller mechanoreceptor stimulus. It's like, grow, 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 grow. I'm not going to do 20 fucking grows. Uh, first of all, I can't count that high. And second of all, that would be annoying. That's all true. However, how this all works at the molecular level is there's essentially an integrator function occurring. It doesn't matter if it's one psychotically long, ultra-heavy rep that fills up what the mechanoreceptors can at maximum give you as far as muscle growth stimulus. You can do five reps to get to that max. You can do one psychotic, insane, slow, very heavy rep. Or you can do up to 30 repetitions that individually don't stimulate a lot of growth, but you're doing 30 of them shits. And they fill up roughly the same amount of growth stimulus, even from tension. You can win a boxing match in two ways. 
fundamentally, forget about points. You can have one big right hook to knock that motherfucker out with one punch, or you can soften his ass up with small punches until he can't see shit, and that last punch isn't even that hard, and he's like, fuck that, I'm out. Either way, it's the same. There's only a certain amount of perturbation your brain can take until it's like, fuck this, cash me out. I'm going to wake up somewhere else. Similar idea in hypertrophy training. Yes, it's true that every rep heavy is more of a tension-mediated growth stimulus. And every light repetition is less of one. But you can do more light reps, and that generally tends to balance out. So if the curve of tension over reps looks like this, or if it looks like this, dick-shaped, of course, it's still roughly the same area, and the area under the curve is that integrator of total amount of molecular signal received to cause you to grow muscle. So whether you do in sets of 20, or whether you do in sets of 5, if you go hard and get close to failure, it's roughly the same result anyway, even just by the tension pathway. All right. Number three, there is a stimulus to fatigue ratio consideration for heavier loads, even heavier than your 5RM. So yes, it's totally possible to lift sets of three, sets of two, one rep max for growth. It can be done. And honestly, lifting your 3RM, every single individual rep of your three rep max is going to grow more muscle than every individual rep of your six rep max, for example. Absolutely, by a long shot. But the per repetition fatigue imposed, joint and connective tissue fatigue especially, the injury risk you're exposing yourself to, albeit low in the absolute sense, is relatively much higher if you go much heavier. That doesn't end up being a really awesome, sustainable way to train. Have you ever met anyone? It's like, I got, it's just for the fucking enormous. You're like, how'd you do it? Like, Doubles, bro, sets of two with my two rep max. You're like, I don't know if I want to be big anymore. The thing is, you'll probably never meet anyone like that because people will break into a million pieces training for weeks and months like that at a time, whereas training in more reasonable sets of five to sets of 30 repetitions is much more sustainable because the stimulus is similar, but the fatigue is much lower. Also, the number of sets you would have to do to sum up enough of those reps is obscene. Who the fuck is doing 10 sets of three? If you do like a West Side Barbell program, cool, but that's for strength and it works pretty well for that. But for hypertrophy, if you told the West Side guys, like, hey, 10 sets of three for size, they'd be like, the fuck is wrong with you, dude? We do sets of five or 10 or even more reps for size. Like For strength, yeah. For size, ah. So you would be making a mistake even in that regard. So there is no magic growth that you can't get out of, at most, your 5RM that your 4 or 3 or 2 or 1RM is going to be able to give you. But it's going to come in with plenty of downsides. So I wouldn't even say like, well, it's cool if you want to train with 3RM. It'll get you the same results. Like, nah, 5 to 30 gets you the same results. Sets of 3, I'm not convinced that that's going to give you the same results because you're going to probably break into a million pieces before you get to being really jacked. Lastly, point number four. Metabolites and pumps matter as well. We have research confirmation of uh, multiple metabolites, including lactate, actually triggering muscle growth mechanistically in the muscle cell. We have multiple lines of evidence that cell swelling itself is hypertrophic. It causes muscle growth as well. And thus the pump causes muscle growth. Now, heavier loads probably cause more growth by a small margin just from the tension pathway. If it was only tension that you were causing growth with, you would be better off doing sets of 5 to 10 then you would be doing sets of 20 to 30. Even the area under the curve doesn't match. You actually get a more robust stimulus with heavier loads. You just do for a few reasons. But what you get out of the higher reps is all of that 90% of the tension you need plus better metabolite sequestration and due to metabolite sequestration, like when your fucking muscles are burning up from lactic acid like crazy, that and a couple of other mechanisms tend to cause a big pump. And that's how we get that research confirmed thing that sets a five, sets a 30, and pretty much everything in between on average for the average person is roughly the same amount of growth. Because the tension stimulus is almost the same. Yeah, training heavier works better on tension alone by a small margin, but the smaller margin is made up for by metabolites and by the pump. So in the end, it's all kind of same, same. However, there's nuances to this on the individual level. Some people will get permanently better results just going heavier or going lighter. Some people are just made for fucking lifting heavy and they get all the best results with it. Some people are made for fucking high reps and they love it. 
But some people, you do a set of five on the leg press, they're like, my knees hurt. You do a set of 20 and their quads blow up like crazy and they're sore for three fucking days. They're like, oh, seemed to have work. For other people, they do a set of eight on, on, on fucking lying leg curls and they're like, oh my fucking God, my hams. And they do a set of 25 and they're like, I felt like I just ran a mile. I'm tired. I'm not getting sore. I'm not getting a pump. This doesn't work. Fuck that. So definitely you got to lean to what works best for you. But it's also going to be dependent on machines. If you're doing free weight, body weight squats, anything much over 15 reps, and it's really a cardio exercise and a lower back exercise, it's not limited by your legs anymore. So maybe set, save your set. And that doesn't mean sets of 15 and above are bad for your quads because the set of 20 and the leg press where your cardio is less of a concern, much less, and your stability is not a concern at all, then it might be a really awesome rep range for you. So it's, sometimes it's context dependent. Sometimes it's muscle dependent. Like your biceps love high reps, your triceps fucking love low reps. And sometimes it's like that. But also there's a variation element. If you train more for high reps than low reps, after a few months, the high reps aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. You switch to low reps, oh, now you're getting some great mind-muscle connection, some great growth, great results. You do that for a few months, and all of a sudden, eh, that's kind of stale. Your joints feel a little beat up. You switch to higher reps, and oh, it's like a rebirth. Tons of growth, tons of response again. So there's tons of wiggle room within this range of 5 to 30, but generally speaking, there's no totally wrong answers there. A lot of individualization, but nothing that for all people we can say definitely Definitely everyone should be training with sets of five to 10 reps. That's just not true. All right. So taking all that together, what kind of recommendations can I give you that you get the most jacked you possibly can, finally grow a pair of fucking testicles, you go over and you ask that girl out, the, you were always thinking, she's so hot, is she so pretty, I'd like to spend time looking into her eyes, and she says no, and you somehow have an awesome cognitive dissonance enough to re-architect the situation in your mind that like you grew from it and you weren't super disappointed, you didn't cry for days, you didn't abandon all your hopes and dreams, and you're going to experience love again, even though you know that's not true because you only had one love and it was that one girl in high school. Before that, let's give you some good research-backed recommendations. Yes, there is a tiny amount of research, teeny tiny, that a combination within a single session of higher reps and lower reps actually gives you more growth than just doing one or just the other. But uh, there's not enough of that research to really like say, ah, this is confirmed. So for those of you in the comments are going to bring that research up, I wish we had more of it. And if I'm sold on that shit, hell yeah, I'll be doing fucking sets of five and sets of 30 in the same session. That'd be great. But for now, your best bet is as I feel about five of these points. Five. I know what five is. God damn it. One. Don't over-index on tension at all costs. Yes, we're all male, 92% of us in this channel anyway, and lifting heavy is fucking sweet, and you can flex on people in the gym, but if you're there for hypertrophy, all, you know, yeah, just admit what's ego and admit what's not. And it's cool to fucking bash your skull against heavyweights, dope. Just don't pretend it's like a better thing. Next, just stick to doing sets close to failure in the 5 to 30 rep range, and fundamentally, there's no wrong answers. Next, Choose the best rep range to get your best stimulus to fatigue ratio in any given muscle, uh, machine slash exercise, and phase of training. For example, uh, choose rep ranges that for that muscle, for that time period, give you a huge tension feel. Like, I really feel like my biceps are fucking ripping up. Give you a crazy burn if it's the high reps. Like, if you're doing a high reps and you're not getting a crazy burn, you're not getting out of the high reps what you think you're getting. Get a huge pump. That's guys that respond really well to heavy weights actually get their biggest pumps from heavy weights. And if they're not getting a huge pump, the tension perception is fucking wild. It kind of has to balance each other out. If you're not feeling a ton of tension from every rep because it's light, you better be getting fucking arm real burns and gnarly fucking pumps. And then you're good to go. Perturbation. Whatever it is you do for your sets and reps, after you're done, your muscles have to be fucked up. Wobbly, poor coordination, much weaker than normal, maybe prone to cramping. It's got to be something to me that tells you, like, you trained your pecs. If you're like, hey, I just trained my pecs really hard. I'm like, sweet. Do you want to do some bench press? You're like, yeah. You can just lift the same amount of weight you normally do, maybe just down by a little. Your muscles don't feel tired a week. You didn't fucking train your pecs. Whatever you did was fucking wrong. Do you train your pecs hard? And I'm like, hey, do you want to bench press? I put 135 on the bar. You, you got to be like, <laughs> my fucking God, what the hell happened to me? Like, ha, you trained hard. So that's perturbation. And lastly, soreness. Like, the muscles should get tired after training and feel kind of weird and maybe even delayed onset soreness where a day later they get sore. That's all good stuff. It's not mandatory, but it's a good sign. And lastly, lastly, joint and connective tissue feel. Uh, you want to keep the joint, joints and connective tissues 
as uh, gingerly attended to as possible. So if you think you grow really well from sets of eight, but your elbows are going to blow up any day now, and you get pretty good training from sets of 15, but your elbows feel amazing when you do sets of 15, eh, more 15s, fewer eights. You only got your own pairs of joints, and when you wear them out, uh, you're that old guy at the gym, like, yep, I used to do that. Oh, cool. Yep, I'm a had a double mastectomy in my elbow joints. You're like, I don't think that's, uh, never mind. Point number four, try to combine rep ranges on the workout, usually with different lifts or sometimes with down sets. So you do four sets of uh, eight to 12 on the leg press and your fifth set, you do a set of 25 reps. Try it out. Or you do squats for sets of five to 10 reps and then on leg presses for multiple sets, you do sets of 15 to 20 reps. Give that a shot. See if it gives you a better feel. I usually spread those out into the week, so I'll have heavier-ish days in the week and then lighter-ish days, but sometimes I mix and match in the session. This isn't going to make a big difference in your training, but whichever one you like the best and seems to work best for you for a variety of uh, indices, give that one a shot. Lastly, feel free to keep it simple as fuck. Like, not that I'm attending to these people, but every now and again, we get a comment like, man, this guy fucking overcomplicates shit. Just fucking lift and train and eat. I guess I'm sorry that you were burdened with a very low IQ from the early age and things are confusing to you that are not to most other people. But those motherfuckers have a bit of a point. And that's like, dude, just pick some fucking weights with good techniques, get closer to failure uh, in, the, in the five to 30 rep range and eat food, sleep a lot, recover, come back, hit it again. And that's kind of no wrong answers. Everything else is nitty gritty. There you go. Full circle. I'm a bro now. I'm going to go fist pump my buddies and, you know, sex in the shower. That's what bros do, right? See you bros in the shower. There is no avoiding hard training if you want to grow. But if you want to grow the most, your training needs to be hard and smart. RP Hypertrophy app will make sure you're progressing on track, monitoring, and adjusting your workout at all times. So for all that work you're doing, you can be sure you're getting the best results.